Hello, I'm Alex Gorioran, one of your hosts for the JWU Explore From Home video podcast series. And we're gonna to welcome you back for this university-wide initiative as we highlight the expertise of some of our faculty and alumni and how their experiences at Johnson & Wales University have prepared them for their career today. Each video highlights a conversation between a JWU professor and an alum or industry partner. And today's conversation will focus on sustainability and the culinary arts. And food is linked to almost every aspect of life from keeping us healthy to defining cultural traditions. And currently, COVID-19 is prompting culinary experts to scrutinize food from new perspectives. And today we're excited to have Chef and JWU Associate Professor Brandon J. Lewis and Chef Aaron Parat of Compass Group as they discuss modern sustainability initiatives in the culinary arts. And Chef Lewis is a certified executive chef from the American Culinary Federation and a specialist in international cuisines and sustainable food systems. He's very passionate about the culinary sustainability education and has received many accolades for his work in the community and the industry. He's been named one of Edible Roadie Magazine's food heroes for his work in serving immigrant and refugee communities. And he was showcased in Rhode Island's episode Bizarre Foods America with Andrew Zimmerman, which focused on local sustainability caught seafood. And Brandon, Brandon's interest in sustainable food systems continues to drive his research into culinary education where he publishes peer-reviewed works. And Chef Aaron Parat uh, grew up in a family that emphasized that food had a purpose more than just a means to survive. And that's something meant to create memories and experiences with other people. And after graduating uh, school at Johnson & Wales University with a concentration in wellness and sustainability, Aaron went on to work in Boston, Massachusetts at Legal Harborside, one of the city's premier restaurants. He then moved to Connecticut to work as a sous chef at Max Downtown, one of Hartford's top restaurants, and later began his role as an executive chef with Compass Group, in addition to owning and operating A La Mac, a small French macaroon baker delivery uh, that delivers all over Connecticut. So gentlemen, thank you for uh, joining us here today. Thank you I, wanted to, I wanted to start our, our conversation to talk about sustainability in general, and I was hoping you could share with us uh, how sustainability is impacting people in our communities during this pandemic. And that will open that up to, to both of you there. You want me, uh, I can start. Go ahead, Chef Lewis, yes. Uh, well, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. And uh, I would say that right now, the pandemic, if uh, ever before, we're a lot more aware of how vulnerable our communities are to um, our supply chains and how important that, uh, that it is that we, we have connections with local growers. Um, this is probably the best year for many local growers that I know, the best year in, in decades uh, for sales. Uh, as industrial food supply chains have sort of broken down during this pandemic, regionalized supply chains and local growers have really uh, come to the rescue. And so I think that this has been a great opportunity for people to realize that they, they've always been there for us and they continue to, to support us. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback off of what Chef Lewis was saying, um, Compass Group is a very, very large international company. Uh, we have a very massive supply chain. Uh, we've actually had to get very creative and come up with some very intricate ways to utilize our supply chain to patch the holes in it where we can, but not only to be able to source our own operations and get the product that we need to feed the thousands of people that we feed every day, um, big one right now being hospitals and the healthcare industry, We've actually utilized our supply chain to help our clients and our customers and our guests to give them access to products they wouldn't normally be able to get because the grocery store supply chains are suffering so much right now. Meats, dairy products, paper products, things like that. We're able to kind of leverage our suppliers to meet the needs of the local communities. That's a, that's a great, I think, also a great demonstration of corporate citizenship too, uh, using your, your resources to help your community that's awesome yeah it's uh it, we've definitely seen a positive a lot of positive feedback from our clients help i mean what do you you know you you, you know that's a, a a something there in terms of how sustainability is is really I impacting in the local economy uh could you maybe speak a little bit more to that and the importance of how sustainability affects the economy and and uh and how the current food system uh can be made more sustainable well I think regionalizing supply chains makes it automatically more sustainable, but when you're sourcing local food, it's 
uh, the you know local dollars stay in your community, and that of course supports your local community uh, financially. But you also have uh, you know better health with better products that taste better, and so your 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 products are already tasting better. They uh, they're, they're more wholesome and they're they're sourced closer. Um, I think what uh, Aaron does is is a great example of that um, with uh, with Compass Group. Yeah, um, it, it definitely helps to play into uh, the economical role of companies like like mine that a company like Compass Group can have serious economical impact on a small region. Um, like when we source during the prime seasons, uh, when we're our busiest time during the summer, we do summer cookouts all over the, the, the state and everything. But just my unit alone was buying several tons of local produce a year. So we're putting those dollars into our produce company who's then buying it from the farmer, who's then supporting families that work for the farmer. They're going out and spending it locally. And it, it just make, it comes full circle, really, especially um, with a company so large like Compass Group, especially the buying power that we have, too. No, that's great. That's great. And, and Chef Lewis, can you give us an overview uh, of the, a little bit of Johnson & Wales, an overview of the Culinary Sustainability and Food Systems Program and some of the initiatives that you've led uh, there? Sure. Um, it was it was actually quite a few years ago, and Aaron was in the you mentioned the the um, wellness and sustainability concentration. Yes. That was our, our first real nudge in that direction. We had already had culinary nutrition, but this is the first time we were going into a uh, more uh, holistic view of sustainability from the economic, environmental, and um, health um, with society. So in 2011, we started that concentration, and uh, it was wildly popular with the students, and we had um, great feedback from our industry partners. And so um, this has grown into now a full degree program that launches this fall. And uh, it's, it's going to be pretty spectacular. We also have a minor launching out of it, and it all focuses on the food system, but not just culinary practice, but also uh, in policy and advocacy and really leveraging the, uh, the um, power uh, a chef has um, as a player in the food system and a participant. So um, as you know, Aaron demonstrates all the time with his work and other graduates of ours, uh, we have roles to play. We can advocate for local foods. We can, um, we can source better products that are less harmful to the environment and to animals. And uh, we can source cleaner, cleaner products. That's great. And, and you know, speaking of that experience, uh, Chef Parag, can you talk to us a little bit about your experience when you were a student at Johnson & Wales and, and some of those experiences. And so, uh, yes, absolutely. So when I was uh, in Chef Lewis's class, uh, when I was going through the program, I specifically remember Chef Lewis teaching me plant-based cuisine class, um, which was very in depth. Um, and that was the class that kind of, I think that was the first one we actually went and visited a farm for an actual project. And it, it kind of put to, it kind of put away the, the old school culinary school mentality, if you will, of you show up, you get the recipe, you learn this technique, you get graded on it, wash, rinse, repeat for your first couple of years. It really brought the whole program kind of full circle where, yeah, we were in the labs, um, you know, using these local products that we were getting through Farm Fresh and other distribution uh, units. Um, so we had these products, but it was a whole other experience to actually go to where they're made and meet the farmer who actually was growing these products or raising the, the livestock or whatever. I remember talking to Anne Maria Blackbird Farm and she was just as passionate about her cows as any chef will talk about something they the recipe they've been working on for months and they finally got right. She was even more ecstatic about it and that really helps to bring the whole thing again full circle. It really makes you realize just how much of an impact a chef can have not only with the people he's serving, but the people he's sourcing from as well. I think that um, that example really, um, that really speaks to how we're not just talking about programmatic change. We're actually talking about a, a totally different approach to how we educate our students. So we're not just transmissively teaching our students and having them do what we say, follow this recipe, um, uh, what, what is uh, scholarly uh, coined as a recipe-based learning. Um, we're actually looking at more of participative uh, learning and cooperative learning. So it's where I'm not this didactic teacher that's telling you what to do, but I'm actually uh, a participant in your learning process. 
And so I, I set up the room and turn on the lights, but you do the work and not just the kitchen room, but the farm setting and that sort of thing. So yeah. we set up our field excursions and we go out, we, we cook in the field and uh, we have these uh, ex amazing experiences. But um, my role as a uh, faculty member is facilitator and, uh, and partner in growing. And, uh, and your role is to, uh, to create the learning, which is pretty exciting. It was definitely more collaborative than, than instructive if that's the, the best, that's probably the best way to put it. It Absolutely. really, like he was saying, we had to really think my teammates and I were, you know, Chef Lewis was there to kind of guide us through it, but it was far more collaboration, both from my team that I was assigned to for that particular class, but also with Chef Lewis and even the other faculty. Some of the other faculty would come in and we would run an idea behind them and they would kind of spin it back on us go, yeah, that's a good concept, but did you happen to think about this? And it would skew a whole new uh, thought process, which was There's really something that, um, kind of blew my mind, honestly, and that really kind of drove home the, the how just how great the program was. There's something to be said about, you know, I could sit here and tell you what's more sustainable, or you can decide for yourself by experiencing it. And that that's a transformative moment. And you can't really do anything except foster conditions to help create that moment. But I can't like make it an outcome of a course. That's something that the learner and in this case, it was your experience, but we, we've had so many students go through that program who are now graduates and they're um, change agents in the world today, um, that you have to have that personal experience. And it, it's, you know, like I said, it completely is transformational. It's, it's, it's really amazing to see it from my end, you know? Yeah. No, that, that evolution is, is amazing and uh, um, on both sides. And, you know, do, you know, do you find yourself, Chef Parat, those, those experiences, uh, are you still leaning on those in your career today? And how, how has that influenced you and what the work that you're doing out there in the industry? Um, it, it really does still kind of drive home the concept. Uh, whenever I'm kind of in a rural area and I see a farm stand, I, I kind of do the crazy thing where it drives my wife a little nuts. I pull the quick U-turn and I spin around and she goes, can you just tell me you're going to do that next time? But I won't get into that. Um, but always stop at the local farm stands. You know, if I'm driving by something and I see like, I was at a farm stand when I worked for the Max Group, I was, uh, I forget exactly where I was, I think somewhere in Wallingford, Connecticut, but I stopped at a farm stand with my dad for something. And I saw just the, I mean, if you saw these baby carrots, they, they looked like something that wouldn't like, that was almost like designed to grow like that, you know, kind of not like I say the buzzword GMO, but they, they looked perfect. And I said to the, the guy in the, the behind the stand, I was like, do you guys grow those here? He went, yeah, we just picked them up. We just picked them a couple days ago. And I was like, how many do you have? And they're like, well, we have those. I'm like, no, like I'm buying them for a restaurant. How many do you have? And he's like, well, how many do you want? I'm like, give me six cases of them. And I showed up to work with six cases of these carrots that were just, I mean, I, I can't describe them. Like they were, and they tasted outstanding. And look, I'm getting excited over carrots, right? Um, but like, that's just the kind of stuff that going to these farms and, and I can't even remember the name of the farm, but to that farmer, I made him make his sales for the week. You know, just at least for a retail sale anyway. I'm sure you're selling other restaurants and whatnot. But to just have that appreciation for the farmer, you know, growing up or not growing up, I shouldn't say I'm, I'm not that old. But, uh, you know, there's an old industry thing where, oh, you can get, you know, like Chef Lewis, you were talking about one time, squash blossoms from Israel in the winter. And it, it yeah, back in the day, that was like the whole thing. Like, look what we can do. But now it's kind of shifted where it's like, no, support the small local guy. Your, your food's going to taste better it's going to be more affordable in the long run and it's going to have a much larger community impact than buying squash blossoms from Israel. Now, be, being a chef today, um, it's, it's clear that there's a certain responsibility, a social responsibility, there's an environmental responsibility, uh, a stewardship responsibility with your yeah. practice. So not only should you be sourcing um, locally, but knowing your farmer. And I think it's great. You're, you're meeting these people and you can learn about their practices. So whether they're organic or just responsibly grown, you can learn about their practices and you right. can make the judgment call uh, and a relationship that will then, you know, uh, grow into, you know, future, future opportunities for you and that grower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a, a great example of the tremendous influence that chefs can have on the, on the food system and the sourcing ingredients and, and really just driving the economy. And I love that, that continual reference of the full circle and that full picture of from farm to table, from classroom to, to farm, you know, all of that. That's, uh, you know, really an exciting experience. Uh, with that, Chef Lewis, can you uh, speak a little bit to some of the expanded offerings and the diversification of the 
culinary education as part of CFIT and as an academic discipline as, as it relates to uh, sustainability? Well, I, I, I certainly can. And I think that that also loops back to what you were just talking about. And that's that we can also include policymaking uh, now with this new bachelor's degree. So we're actually teaching students about uh, the political economy that surrounds their food and uh, being able to trace back where products are from and the rules that police how they're, how they're governed. And so that's just another component that we're adding to this new program, uh, which, uh, as I mentioned, it launches this fall and we have fantastic uh, new courses, uh, culinary labs and agricultural courses where students are actually going, um, going out into the field, they're growing their own products. We have one course called Growing for the Menu where we're actually designing gardens around menus and menus around gardens. And so we'll be uh, doing a, a basically growing, uh, garden planning, and then a, a large farm to table dinner at the end of that, that course. And that's just an academic course. So in our labs, we're going to have, uh, we have a course called Cooking for um, uh, Re Regenerative Foodways, where we're going to work with community partners and we're going to um, help prepare products that are actually representative of different minority groups in our areas and um, different um, indigenous cuisines as well. And so that's a really exciting course opportunity. We have um, a laboratory called um, um, Cooking from the Farm Stand, where we'll be doing a lot of local sourcing, uh, very similar to what you did, uh, uh, Chef, uh, in your courses, um, where we'll, we'll be sourcing local products uh, using our Farm Fresh uh, Rhode Island market mobile, and we'll be meeting farmers at their farms and helping them harvest the products that we're going to then cook in our labs and invite them to the lunch. And so we're going to be doing that all the way from freshman to senior year uh, in this new program. It's really, really exciting. And, um, and it, it, it goes on. There's quite a few courses that um, you definitely have to check our website out to see the full course catalog. But um, it's, it's pretty exciting. So it, let me ask you a question. Is this whole sustainability process initially starting from the time they walk in, like to the university? And it's, it's kind of like pushing away from the you start with storeroom, then you go to meat cutting, kind of, it's kind of making it more of a full circle transition. So we, we have a couple transitions happening at the university currently. We're switching from trimesters to semesters, uh, Shell. And so um, it, while we're doing that, we're also retooling our entire curriculum. And our curriculum now also encompasses sustainability in the core curriculum from the beginning uh, all the way through. We have this um, new, new concept called the freshman year experience where we teach professional cooking skills with a sense of sustainability, nutrition, and some of these, uh, and science, and some other um, important side components uh, that all kind of interlace and become one experience. And then um, in that freshman year, they take an introduction to food systems, and then they go into their sophomore year where it's very, it explodes in sustainability. So sustainability labs, um, I built into it eight free elective courses where students can focus in on culinary sustainability, where that concentration used to be, and they can focus directly on the farm to table movement, or they can go into policy and advocacy and focus on, on creating rules and laws and, and working either for state wow. companies um, to help represent uh, supply chains. And with that, we have a supply chain management area of focus, public health, and uh, writing for development for NGOs. So it's really exciting and, um, and uh, pretty, I, I don't yeah, know, wow. I'm just too excited about it. I can't wait for September. Yeah, that's, that's really something, that's really cool. I'm jealous. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you paved the way. Um, you, you were the, you know, the, the generation that pushed this forward and said, this is what we want. And this is something we're finding now is um, students from high school who are enrolling in college after they graduate are, are really saying like, hey, I care about the future and I want to do something about it. They want a career that matters and a career that addresses some of these challenges that we're facing today. We're in this pandemic and you can see a great example of that now. Um, how we need to react and we need to be more prepared. And so I can speak to that more, but um, I'll let uh, the interview continue here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is great. This is perfect. And, you know, because ultimately uh, the, the two of you really have been pioneers in all of it, if you've referenced it and the curriculum that you're creating and, and the influence that you have in the community, Aaron, and, and, and what you're doing there on campus. So, you know, to think about a prospective student, uh, you know, and they're considering an education at Johnson and Wales, uh, what's some advice that you might share with them if they're considering attending Johnson & Wales University uh, and or considering a focus around sustainability? I'd love to hear from, from, uh, from Chef Parat on that first and then, uh, and then we'll go to Chef Lewis. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, the concept of sustainability is, is the future of the way food is going. 
Uh, my company um, is definitely moving in that uh, direction uh, from not only the food we source, but the, the products that we source. You know, we're sourcing biodegradable uh, paperware and silverware and plastic paper straws. And we've actually worked with some of our clients that, you know, and, and I won't go into too much detail, but we actually removed bottled water from one of our um, locations and went with box water uh, because it, the packaging itself was biodegradable uh, versus the plastic bottling. Um, so it's moving in that direction. And I think what Johnson & Wales is doing is, is absolutely brilliant in kind of reevaluating, taking the old program and not being afraid of going, hmm, this is what we have, but the world has changed. What is, which direction is the world going? Um, don't go in there with the closed mind of, I'm just gonna go in there, learn a few cooking techniques, maybe some accounting, and then get out and go and work in the world. Um, be something different than that. You know, the generation before us, that's how they were. Um, you know, and no, no fault to them. A uh, great generation kind of paved the way, kind of brought and encouraged our generation to come up and challenge the status quo and challenge what the current situation is and say, hey, this is great, but can we make it better? And to speak up and things, hey, that's not so great. You know, we're falling short here. We have a responsibility, we have a duty. And to kind of another thing to, to the prospective students is just forget that mentality of this is what we're gonna do, that we're just gonna we're gonna come in, we're gonna do our job, we're gonna go home. That's not what Johnson and Wales is breeding people to do. Johnson and Wales is breeding people to pave pathways, to be leaders in the industry, to not just be content with what they're given, to select what their, their products, to to pave that road, to to question things. You know, don't and that that's that's kind of my biggest thing is don't just come in, do your job, do your homework and go home. Dive into it, dig deep into it, um, annoy your professors. Um, I'm pretty sure there was a couple of times where Chef Lewis was like, if this kid asks me one more question, I'm going to throw him into the hallway. Um, but that's what they're there for. Pick their brain, dig it apart, and really just just get everything you can and just dive into it with everything you've got. There's lots of other things great at Johnson Wales, you know, extracurricular activities, clubs and sports and whatnot. But don't forget why you're there. You're there to learn how to make a change and to dive in and just grab it and run with it for as best you can. That's probably my biggest thing to any prospective student. And in closing, Chef Lewis, would you like to share some some thoughts and advice for some prospective students out there? Sure. First of all, that was so well said, Chef. Yeah, perfect. Uh, said. And um, I would say that, um, you know, there's this, this saying, um, oh, why not me, why not now? And that's what students need to be thinking as they come in. Um, to, to speak to what you were just saying, Chef, there, there's this concept of backcasting. And it, it's a play on the word forecasting. But instead of looking to what the future will tell us to do, we're, we, we're in the mindset that we need to be telling, you know, we look at the future that we want and we look back at what decisions do we need to make today to have that ultimate future. And that's what we're looking to do now. And so when our learners come in, they need to be thinking in that mindset that they can create their own future at Johnson Wales and they can be critical thinkers. They can be adaptive, resilient learners. And that's what we need to tackle problems and challenges that we don't even know or can't anticipate at this time. And, you know, Johnson Wales will get us there. Uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, if I could just add one more thing. Um, yeah, please kind of piggyback off of, you know, the, to, to challenge things and to always, you know, question the status quo. But don't forget, you still have to learn the basics. Um, one thing I want to make sure students understand is it's great that you have ideas. It's great that you, 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 you want to change, but you got to know how to crawl before you can walk. That's from an employer standpoint, I can tell you, you got to know the basics. You got to understand some of the core concepts, but don't be afraid in the end to speak up and just kind of go, Hey, I get it. I understand why we're doing it this way, but let's make it better. So just wanted to add that little bit in there. I forgot that before. Great. No, this is uh, it's amazing and very exciting. And, and just, just to kind of really thinking in the words of pioneering and new ideas and how Johnson and Wales is leading the way. And I think we can all see that food and innovation and sustainability will feel new ideas and advancement in the industry, especially with you all leading the way and uh, with the tools that people can get at Johnson & Wales and some of those unique opportunities. Uh, so I want to uh, thank you again, uh, Chef Lewis and Chef Parat for uh, joining us and sharing all this great information and how the curriculum at Johnson & Wales has influenced your career. It's pretty exciting to see. Um, I certainly hope to get down to Connecticut and uh, try some of those macaroons at some point. Uh, but uh, I'll ask them for you. yeah, absolutely. And uh, certainly want to keep track of Chef Lewis, all the great happenings you're doing in the programming 
uh, there with CFIT. That sounds so exciting. So thank you both for sharing some of this information. And to all of you exploring from home, stay tuned for our next video series. In the meantime, check us out online at jwu.edu to explore more. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.